Hello everybody and welcome back to Farming Simulator 22. Now I'm expecting a train very soon because we have, there it is, uh, we have a good price on sugar beets. I've just looked into it and £465 is good. I know the grain elevator is offering a bit more but we were using the train silo because we can store it for free. So uh, yeah, obviously we miss out a little bit but we have taken advantage of the storage and we've made sure we're selling it at a good price. So here we go. Just wait for it to pull in and then we can load it up. Okay, jump into the locomotive and we shall open it up. So I think that one really is for grain. We shouldn't really be putting sugar beet into there. I'm guessing the next one is more for sugar beet. Find sugar beet on here. There we go. 171,000 litres. I hope we can keep filling with us outside the train. Yep, looking good. And okay, I have <laughs> teleported through the uh, the side of it, but not to worry. I wanted to see in. There we go. That's exactly what I wanted. And I guess really we should be pulling forward to make it evenly distributed. But for once, I've actually filled a truck on the train. And it looks like we might have run out of space. Yes, it can only take 120,000 litres. Good grief. Do we have anywhere else to put it? Can we put it in the front one? Maybe we can do. Let's just see if I can put some overflow in the grain one. Yes, it's another 51,000 litres. This is incredible. Okay, so I'm expecting a fairly decent income from this. Just look at that. That one looks quite full. The one behind, as we know, is already very full. So let's take it to the sell point. I've never sold so much before. This is brilliant. It's a great opportunity to see all the lovely autumnal colours. Oh, I've never been down there before. I can't see a collectible, but there might be one. It's the sort of place you would hide one. There's my farm. Again, we've done this recently. So here we go. The train will continue. I obviously get dropped off here. How much are we going to make? 79,880 pounds from just one field. And really, for sugar beet it was a pretty small field, so that is amazing, that is really good. And we now have 194,000 pounds. So it means that I can now buy anything really that I'm really looking for in the near future. So it could be a new tractor, it could even be if it came up used, the olive harvester. Chances are though that's not gonna come up used. Potentially a bigger combine, but I'm okay with one we have currently. And also we could get another field. So really, let's just see what the next day brings. Let's just see what's going to be in the used machinery sale. Okay, so nothing that I'm actually interested in buying. That, however, is a good price, but we already have the JCB. So that's a shame, really. That is nice. Well, if we didn't have the JCB, we would have bought this. That is a great deal. Uh, so let's just move on a bit, see some daylight. But of course we're at that time of year again, uh, where it's just winter, there's not too much to be done. It looks like the sheep could do with another bale, and water, it's running very low. And the chickens can do with some barley, yep, they do have some food, but not really enough to keep them going. Anyway, I had a really good suggestion, and that was to change the uh, greenhouses to the same crop type so that it's just easier to load and really the crop type in question is the lettuce because that is the bulkiest we can get I think 200 litres per pallet the pallets are bigger which means we're not absolutely cramming hundreds into a trailer because that causes lag a few episodes ago that's what happened I had loads and loads of tomato pallets and I got some horrendous lag 8 frames per second to be precise so I'll change that in a second First of all though, yep, let's just get some barley into here. 
I don't need to go too crazy, but I really don't know how much they're going to take, so... I think I'll put in... Yeah, we'll just, we'll just do a full load. I can, I can tip anything that we don't use back into the pit. So today, we do have to do some cultivation work. I have my lovely new cultivator. These chickens won't take too much. And I do really need to do a few changes around the farm. It would be better to have two very large chicken coops instead of just the chicken enclosure and the chicken coop. And I know that the sheep aren't really worth keeping. A few people have mentioned this. But it's just quite nice to see some fluffy sheep. So they do um, generate some money. And we are breeding them. I'm selling them as we breed them. So it's not quite as bad as it appears. I know if we're just selling wool without doing a production, they're not really worth doing. Okay. And then when I've tipped this, I will also uh, give everyone water. So that's the sheep. And the greenhouses. For some reason, not the chickens, though. Chickens take water, but we don't have to give them any water. Maybe they have some kind of fancy watering system. Like rain. Okay, so they took just 26% of a trailer. That's good. The more we have, the better. For the future. Uh, so whilst that's tipping, let's just go over here. We will sell these tomatoes at some point. Um, but yes, it's... Uh, absolutely full so I might just sell them it's just gonna be easier than loading up tons and tons of pallets so yes we need to enable the lettuce over here deactivate the tomatoes that one is out of water so yeah we'll just do that actually this can tow that can't it it can I might as well just attach it to the dolly. There we go. Although it does need to be filled up fairly soon. This is going to be a good test to see how well the lorry can tow the tanker out of the lake. But if I do that, I will make sure that it is on the uh, fifth wheel. Because otherwise, it might not have enough weight on the chassis. But for just doing a bit of yard manoeuvring... Towing it on the dolly is absolutely fine. There we go. Right, hopefully that's close enough. Ooh, it's going to be close. Come on, please. Yes, there we go. So, not really enough to give to the greenhouses, but it is only one greenhouse, although I know it will probably take about 30 or 40% of a tanker. There we go. Empty the rest out. So, detach the tanker part. Take the dolly off. I'll probably reverse it down the side here. A tractor can take that in the future. But I wonder how well this is actually going to perform because I really don't expect it to do too well. The tractor struggles. With virtually 250 horsepower, we do only just get out. So I'll see you over at the lake, and um, yeah, we'll see. See exactly how it performs. And then we must get on, we must do some cultivation work. This is where I always park, <laughs> in the lake. Uh, so we'd fill it to the top, as I always do. And then I tend to pull out somewhere over there. Near the, uh, the tree, which looks dead, but obviously just lost all its leaves early. Okay, so a bit of a run-up is going to help. Let's get going. We are 100% full. The gear shifting is going to be the issue. If we could just put it... Well, I can put it into manual. Stick with one gear. But, wow, there we go. I guess a four-wheel drive lorry is uh, very good. In fact, I think it did it better than the tractor. It must be because we have the weight on the drive wheels. Which was my concern with using a dolly. So it would be interesting now to do it with a dolly. Next time... I doubt it will be able to do it, but that is great news. There we go. So just wait until it's emptied. Enough. 
Yeah, it's already 40% of a tanker. It's already had some before this. Wow, this one is so thirsty. So probably, I don't know in total, probably about 60, well, 65 to 70%. Yeah, it takes quite a bit. Just turn those beacons off. Okay, so into the McCormick. We are hopefully going to be buying a new tractor, though. That is my plan. We do now have the money to be able to buy one used. Uh, we can buy a very good one. Maybe even 350 horsepower. Okay, let's just go up here. Find my cultivator. Yes, yeah, so we have two fields to do. I don't know why, but it's always laggy whenever I look this direction. If I go looking in this direction, it's super smooth. As you can see with the frame rate, 60. But if I look over here, it fluctuates like mad. So I really don't know why that would be. I've experienced this before on previous versions of FS. I guess it's just the way the game is made, but I know nothing about how it's made, so... I'll leave that to the experts. Okay then, so yeah, into this field. There's nothing else we can do, because it was sugar beet, so we can't do any kind of... Uh, at least I don't think we can do any kind of mulching. There's no stubble. It's already been mulched up by the uh, topper. And in we go. So, preparing for the next crop, which is probably going to be something like uh, sorghum again. Yeah, the other thing which we could do uh, straight away is, um, well, as soon as it's the right time of year, put in the olive groves with our money. But even if, we, even if we've got a used tractor, we should still have plenty of money to be able to do that. So it's opening up a lot of possibilities, especially as I'm probably going to sell the Valtra and maybe even the Matty Ferguson as well. Because I can use the telehandler as a bit of a yard shunter for some things. Right, so yes, I'm going to do this field first. It won't take too long. Then we're going to head over to what is going to be the olive field. Field number 12. Okay, let's just try and miss this tree. That is the issue with going a bit close with the forest. But the forest is looking so good. I just can't believe how fast it's grown. Unnaturally fast, but it still looks good. The weirdest thing is how we still have one type, which is still a little sapling. All put in at the same time, yet some of them still look like this. So I don't know if they've just failed, maybe they didn't grow. I'm sure they will grow eventually. But they're taking their time. <laughs> okay then, I'll see you when it's done. And there we go, we conclude this field using this fantastic cultivator. Really pleased that I bought it. A vast upgrade over the previous one. Not because the other one was bad, just because of its size. So, uh, yes, we shall follow it up. We'll go to field number 12. This really won't take too long because it's not a very big field. In fact, it'll probably take longer to drive to the field than it will to actually cultivate it. And yes, I am certainly putting in some olives whenever we can. I think it might have been April. March or April. Fastest way to go is left, I think. It's fairly similar in both directions. I've also taken a look at our cover crop field, and it is ready to cultivate. 
I didn't think it'd be ready so soon, but yep, it says it can be done. So that's a job for the worker. When we get back to the farm, I'll just do a quick bit of uh, setting up on the headlands, and then a worker can do the rest. That's going to give us an application of fertilizer. So I've just been having a think about what I could do uh, with the yard. I think if I was to sell the Massey Ferguson tractor and the Vulture, and then buy a small yard shunting tractor like the 4700 or the Izeki, something like that, that would be good because then we can still move trailers around, we can move stuff around uh, very easily, but we don't have to have a more expensive, higher horsepower tractor. Although, now I've said that, the resale price of one of those tractors might be the same as the new price of uh, the two I mentioned. Unless we're lucky enough to get them in the sale, but I haven't seen them yet. But it must be random. I'm sure every machine is eligible to go into the sale. We'll just have to find out. Anyway, as I said, we'll get this done. Oh, we've got snow in the forecast now. When is it going to snow? This is crazy. In December. It doesn't snow in the UK. <laughs> no way it does. It doesn't snow where I live, though. Uh, 8, eight o'clock tonight, so it's actually quite some time. It's going to snow all night. Wow. Uh, we might have to get ready for the... Uh, we might have to get a snowplow ready. Be prepared for the snow. ready to be planted or drilled in the spring. Again, I'm not too sure what crop it's going to be. Something fairly simple. Because it's just not much of an area, so we don't need to make a big fuss about it. Eventually, I'm sure it will be turned into just a huge olive field. That's the plan. So we'll, yeah, just drill it with grass, or maybe the... Uh, in fact, yeah, when you plant the olive groves, they automatically put grass in. Now, I've noticed I have actually left probably a pickup truck. Is it my pickup truck? Over here? Yes, I have. So we can use this opportunity to uh, try and get it to drive back to the yard with me following it. Go to this location. If we can just park there, that would be great. Right, okay. I probably can't keep up. We do have, uh, we do have a 32 mile per hour gearbox, which is not bad. I'll let it go in front of me. This is a nice feature though, being able to get a worker to take a machine or a vehicle somewhere. Not speeding, that's for sure. I think I probably will be able to keep up. Oh, they're getting paid by the minute though, aren't they? Now I understand. <laughs> right, yes, I'm sure we'll have no problems. Just the right speed. Oh no, don't. No! Braking now. Oh. I always go that way. Interesting. Well. Maybe it is shorter distance. Not too sure. But it's not the way I would have chosen. Clearly though, no issues at all. It's going to get back to the point where I told it to go to. You can really see it thinking. Really is always trying to read the road. Is this the right way to go, it's thinking? But yeah, it certainly is. And there we go. Right where I told it to go. Uh, pretty much. Spins around just for a bit of fun. Uh, so, yeah, good. I can now put that away where I want it. Which is probably going to be, come to think of it, over there because we have loads and loads of chicken eggs. Yeah, so. I think I would prefer to move on to the next day. I was going to set the cultivator going, but as we have loads of snow imminent, and there's absolutely no rush whatsoever to get the cultivating done in that field, the cover crop, we might as well just move on. So, yep, I'll put my cultivator away, and we'll see the snow arrive. We can probably still cultivate in the snow anyway. I can't see why we wouldn't be able to. If it's not totally frozen if the ground isn't rock hard or too muddy it should be okay 
So, yeah, I, I, would, I just want to try a bit of uh, snow plowing if I can do. I think he said 8pm, so it should just start any second now. See if it's 8pm on the dot. I think it'll be slightly before. But then it's usually the opposite of what I say, so let's just see. Eight PM is now. Wow, pretty much was on the dot. Beautiful, very Christmassy, very Christmassy. And yeah, if it really does snow for as long as it says it's going to, uh, then it's going to be uh, pretty deep by the morning. Yeah, it's going to be uh, minus seven, minus eight, stopping about two AM. So I'm not going to buy a snowplow for nothing. We'll make sure it settles first, but I'm sure it will do. Well, we'll probably rent it. And I'm just going to try and rest, see if it still settles if I rest. The snow should have stopped by the morning. Yep. Okay, so it's not properly settled. It's very frosty. That might be because I did sleep, but I can't see why it would affect it. Still very Christmassy, though, and there's more snow to come. Yeah, it's going to snow afternoon, so I'm sure we still have an opportunity to do some snow plowing. Anyway, since it didn't settle, let's cultivate the field. Well, the work can do. We need to check and see if we can afford a new tractor. Oh, wow. Wow, look at all this stuff. It's brilliant. So, how 326... Well, I wasn't going to buy a John Deere, but that's a pretty good deal. We could get it and then we could sell it in the future and replace it with a Matty Ferguson. Uh, that would be my plan. Sometimes you just can't refuse good offers. Uh, and it's not like we're locked in, we can get rid of it. Emerge Max, that's a pretty good deal. We could replace our Windra. Some really good things today. So that's 9.5 meters they're working with. And my one, let's just find Windrowers, is 8.4. Not a huge difference, really. Probably not enough to justify getting it. The much better would be great if we had cows, but at the moment we don't have any cows, but I do want to get some. And then we have this, which would be great for the forest, but again, it's not really something we need desperately. So I think we're going to have to get this. We'll keep it all at the default, because um, I don't really want it. It's just we, we kind of want it. So yeah, we'll go for it. Interesting stuff. So in that case, um, I could use the John Deere on this. Although the McCormick doesn't have any issues with the cultivator, but it does have an issue with the planter. Finds it very heavy. Right then, worker. Let's get you working. I'll just do my usual up and down here. And also up against the grass so it doesn't go cultivating that up. Because I think it will do. It's always trying to eat my grass. You naughty worker. Oh, here's the snow. Oh yeah, <laughs> it's at 120. We'll put that to 5. That's something quite beautiful about doing a bit of cultivating in the snow. Don't need the beacons anymore. try not to go into the grass, but it does seem to uh, be quite easy to do. It's because I drilled that piece of grass, so it will very easily rip it out. It won't rip it out if it's part of the headland or whatever, just because that is the original field. So like, like here, if I don't lift up, it's not going to do anything, as you can see. There is a distinctive difference between the drilled grass and the default grass the grass that was already there. Okay, right, well, let's get back up to the top and we'll set it off. It won't take long at all. We should see that it is applying fertilizer as we go. Yep, so there you go. No fertilizer here, but where we've cultivated, we have fertilizer. Green manure. There we go, so it's all on a worker. It will get that done pretty quickly. And now I think I'm going to 
get rid of the Massey Ferguson and the Vultra, as I've been saying for ages, and we're going to replace it with a 4700, because then we can still have more money left over in the bank. Still need to get the Fent Vineyard tractor as well. It's going to live over at the olive field. So a lot of different changes happening here. Just moving these eggs out of the way. Uh, we'll definitely see the, uh, the Massey Ferguson and probably the Vulture tractor back in the future in a different series. But I just don't need them anymore because the others have replaced them. We, we need sort of smaller and bigger. <laughs> we just don't need this size anymore. I'm not sure if I'm actually going to buy the 4700 today. It would be good to get it in the sale. But I'm certainly going to get rid of these because they are depreciating and wearing out. So we'll repair it. 44,315. Not bad. And this tractor which has done almost 14 hours with us. A very nice tractor. Just getting rid of it to free up a bit of space and to get something more appropriate. A bit more money to spend there, but yeah, almost £40,000 back. I would say worth doing. So, as I said, we need to get this tractor. We could get another Landini, but yeah, this tractor for the uh, the olives. And this one, most likely, for the yard. Although we could get this one, but it's more expensive. So that's going to come in a future episode. For today, though, we have the John Deere. I can't believe we've actually managed to afford an 8R 280. And we have... £185,000 left. I just have to make sure I haven't bought a 280 horsepower tractor because that's not what we want. Yeah, a 280 is actually 326. A 310 is 357. And so on. So, yeah, um, that's good. As for weight, we probably should put a John Deere weight on this. Yeah, there is this belly weight. I'm not too sure if it's going to fit this particular tractor. It is considerably more expensive though, so we'll go for this. We don't really need to care about uh, anything sticking out in front. There we go. Or taking up the front linkage. So the first time I've actually owned a John Deere in FS22. Fancy. And when we get it back to the farm, we can put it into the workshop and change the oil. I don't know if this snow is going to settle. Oh, I ran over my own generator. Go over there. Uh, so, yep, yeah, let's repair. Good grief. Well, I suppose we do get some of that money back when we resell it. It's quite expensive, but then, yeah, it was used, so it must have had a fairly major issue with it. And this can be used on the planter. It's going to be good. As for today, though, with it being so grim, unless we're going to get a snow plow, it doesn't really have a job. What do you think? The John Deere 8R. I can't believe I have one on the farm, but yeah, I had to get a John Deere sooner or later. Okay, so let's just move one of these bee pallets out of the way. We are going to be focusing on the bees very soon. Oh yes, of course, it's stuck. Um, it's not quite full yet. Yeah, I think we'll sell this and we'll get a bigger one. Put it in a better place. I will take over from the worker and get this field finished. Maybe by the time I finish, there'll be some snow actually on the ground. I know it's been quite a big episode for cultivating, uh, but at least we're now done. No more cultivating to do until the end of this year or next year. Which means in the next episode we'll be in the spring, doing drilling, we'll prune the grapes, but most importantly, we'll put the olives in. We can plant the olives. So this is going to be interesting, I can't wait to do that. 
We have plenty of money left over. Which means we can go big almost straight away. Probably can't do the whole field, but it can still cover all of the grass area. At the very least. We might even go into the area of cultivated, but that doesn't matter. Right, okay, so when we get to the end, we'll obviously be done, and we should have a nice, even application of fertilizer without even buying a bag of fertilizer just by drilling a crop. Wow, silhouettes. Uh, yeah, so I think cover crops are worth it. If, you, if you're running seasons, they are worth it because there's nothing you can do in the winter anyway. This is all grown ever since I harvested it and we're already cultivating it in. So it only took a few months to grow. It's worthwhile. Improving the soil health. Right, so let's just take a look there. Should fill it. Yep, look at that. Brilliant. I guess I should have done it to the uh, sugar beet fed if there was time. When we harvested in October, didn't we? So... Was the time? Yes, just about. If I'd done it the same day, we could have done it. We wouldn't be able to cultivate it until about March, but that doesn't matter. Okay, well, I don't think the snow is going to settle. It just seems to be maybe too wet. I don't know. Obviously, some reason for it. Uh, very realistic, though, if this was the UK. This is certainly my experience of snow. It never settles. Well, it it does settle, but you know, it, most of the time, whenever it does snow on a rare occasion, it just snows and never accumulates. Put some lights on. Get it back in the shed. And yeah, next episode will be in March or April, just to uh, really move things along. As I said, so there we go. Brilliant. Of course, if it does settle in the next few minutes, I will return. But it's looking unlikely. Thanks for watching, everybody. Hopefully you've enjoyed the video. And until next time, see you again soon. Bye for now.